Hello and welcome to the second episode of Closing Deals and Heels podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And today, ladies, we're going to talk about something super important, which is the difference between masculine and feminine in sales. And uh, not to say man versus woman, but difference in, in energy, right? Masculine energy versus feminine energy and like what we're actually supposed to do with it. Um, the one thing that I noticed is that there is zero sales training until now specifically designed for women, right? And every single sales training that I've ever been a part of or done of was always by men for men. So if we can learn a feminine perspective here, um, we can use the assets that we naturally have in a sales process in order to close easier. Um, in fact, a study recently showed that women actually have a tendency to close 11% higher than men in sales. And why is that? Well, a couple of different things. Number one, as a woman, you are listening to somebody with the intention of trying to understand. Um, we're also naturally empathic, right? We have the ability to empathize about others. We're naturally intuitive. Um, we have this beautiful thing called intuition. And we're nurturers. We love to nurture people, which is why we're so great at helping people uh, make changes in their life and, and choose something new, which is what sales is. Sales is change. You know, from learning masculine and feminine when it comes to sales um, really was more from at this time in my life when I felt that every single thing that I was doing in sales felt gross, like super nasty and authentic gross. And I remember I have this beautiful sheet of paper and the sheet of paper had three or four different columns on it. And every single column had a different objection that somebody could possibly say. And there's three or four different rebuttals of how to respond. This sounds like a really useful piece of paper, right? <laughs> no, wrong. Because every single response was super masculine, super like bro world in your face and just felt really out of alignment with who I am as a woman and didn't feel like it was in alignment with me. So a good example, which I think I mentioned in the last podcast episode was I'm not interested. So if somebody says, I'm not interested, this piece of paper told me to say, of course, you're not interested. If you were interested, you'd be calling me versus me calling you. Now, what is the biggest problem in your business and how can we fix it? See, here's the problem with these pre-made objection handling responses when they're just made to try to prove somebody wrong. What it does in the prospect's mind is make you feel like y'all are not on the same page. And this is a huge issue when it comes to somebody making a decision. If there's any level of opposition when it comes to you having a conversation with somebody else, y'all will not be able to comfortably be able to say yes to each other. When there's opposition, you're automatically in a fight or flight response. And in a fight or flight, you're not really wanting to give somebody a hug, right? So it's really hard for you both to be able to come to an agreement where both parties feel really good um, versus somebody pushing somebody into that agreement. Have you ever had that experience where somebody on a sales call is pushing you, right? It's really aggressive and it's really out of alignment with me. And I don't think that it's in alignment with you if you're listening to this podcast. So what could we possibly do? Like, what's the difference between using our feminine assets in a sales conversation? And let's talk specifically about like objection handling, because there's so much that we can talk about today. There's so much that I can go into in terms of any sales process. But in terms of objection handling, um, I feel like this is really relevant because so many um, of us, including myself, we're really scared when it comes to the end of a sales call. Have you ever had this experience? Oh my gosh, you're talking to somebody, they're really great, you're having all these questions and you know, you're know you finding their problem, you're figuring out their goal and it comes to the end and all of a sudden you start sweating a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember this one time I closed this huge um, builder when I was in B2B sales, um, just for the meeting, not the actual deal. And we're coming in, we're sitting across the table from the builder. And during this meeting, I'm wearing this royal blue polyester, like real cheap fabric dress. 
<laughs> then I bought it at some thrift store because I couldn't afford nice clothes. And at this time, I'm sitting across the table from these guys, and this is a huge account. <laughs> and they're having me start the meeting. And of course, I'm stuttering a little bit, and I'm not being able to fully formulate my words. And all of a sudden, my armpits <laughs> start prickling. And I look down, and there's like these huge, like, sweat stains on this blue dress. And I'm just like... Oh, dear God, what is happening? Because we start talking about the number one thing, which makes, from my experience, me feel uncomfortable. A lot of women that are my clients feel uncomfortable. Women that I talk to feel uncomfortable when it comes to talking about money. When you get to the end of a close and end of a sale and money comes up, right? All these beliefs around money come up. You start feeling uncomfortable. They might start feeling uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden we're afraid of what to do at the end of a call, or at least that's from my experience. Like I was so afraid of, oh my God, what is this person going to say? <gasps> what is this person going to think about me? Oh my gosh, I don't want them to feel like I'm pushing them because I had such a bad experience with being pushed with sales calls before. So what the hell do I do at the end of a call? And men are designed to hunt. <laughs> masculine energy like designed to go out there hunt and get it done when you think about like the olden buffalo days right when men went to go hunt buffalo and they were out hunting buffalo with all their uh, friends <laughs> when they go to hunt they weren't about to go throw that spear and then all of a sudden they say oh my god <laughs> Stacy looked so weird at me this morning. It hasn't touched me in two days. It hasn't picked up little Tommy all week. I think something's wrong. I can't hunt today. Like, no, that doesn't happen. They are allowed to put their emotions aside and go hunt. Well, us ladies, you know, we are emotional creatures. And instead of us pretending to be men, um, why don't we honor our emotions, honor like who we are and be able to use those assets um, with what we do? So when it comes to objection handling, using a feminine side, a feminine perspective, having the understanding of what an objection is is so critical and so important. When somebody has an objection, it's because somewhere in the sales process, you did something or said something that triggered the crap out of them. When I say triggered, what I mean is that like all of us have trauma. All of us have trauma about certain situations, certain things, um, and we all go through trauma. Let's say you were a little kid and you were singing and then somebody said, oh my God, you suck at singing. And now anytime you try to sing, you feel nervous in the pit of your stomach because when you were a little kid, you were told that you were good enough at something. And so you have some sort of fear when it comes out. And that's just a small example. We all have some type of trauma. And a lot of us ladies have trauma around money. And because we're not built to provide, we're built to nurture. And so when it comes to a position when we're having to provide or somebody hasn't provided for us, we might have trauma around money. Okay. Now, take that with a grain of salt. There's so much that we can expand on when it comes to that. When it comes to an objection and a person is triggered by you, something inside of them felt unsafe. That's all you have to know is that if they have an objection, they do not feel safe. They do not feel safe and they're going to be in fight mode or flight mode, which means that they're going to avoid and want to get off this call with you. Oh, I just need to think about it. Oh, thank you so much for your time. Oh, I have another call that I have to get on. Oh, little Tommy just got home from school. I need to take care of him. Like whatever is coming up, they're trying to flight or they're trying to fight being like, oh, I really just don't think that this is going to work right now. Uh, it's not the money. It's this, this, this. And they're trying to give you all these reasons and it's coming across as slightly argumentative. So instead of trying to answer the fear and the unsafe, you know, thoughts that this person's having, take a minute and because I feel like sometimes when somebody else is triggered, it triggers us. Like, have you ever had that experience when somebody else is like in a bad mood and it comes up to you and now you're in a bad mood? Same type of thing. So if I have this understanding that, hey, the girl in front of me or the person in front of me just feels unsafe right now. I just need to make sure that she gets to feel safe. So how do I do that? Um, first, I need to get me grounded, right? Put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you take care of other people. I'm going to take a deep breath. 
because I've been at the end of calls where people have cussed me out when it comes to objections. So sometimes it still triggers the crap out of me too. So we take a deep breath. I'm going to look at the person in front of me. And the first thing I'm going to say to my mind is, look at the masterpiece that's in front of me. This is an amazing human. Look at the amazing qualities. They've had a life. Like, try to really just honor them for a moment and try to breathe. And I'm going to disarm them by acknowledging them. So I acknowledge them by, first of all, like, Sally, like, thank you for sharing this with me. I appreciate your ability to share. I appreciate your vulnerability. I appreciate you taking the time to elaborate more on this. I I could see where you're coming from. You know, not a lot of people would share this. Uh, like, I just really honor you for, for being able to tell me what's coming up for you. And I pause. The pause is really important. If I said this really, really fast, it wouldn't land either. So using a good tonality here, and really making the sales safe, I'm trying to make sure that they feel nurtured. I'm using the natural qualities that I have to make a safe space. After I do so, I'm going to agree with this person. Now, agreement has been taught in sales for a while, and it's really, really important. If I'm agreeing with this person, we are on the same side. If you do not agree with them, they will feel like you're not listening to them. And if you're not listening to them, you're there for you and you're not there for them in the first place. So why are you on the sales call anyways? Sales not about you. It's about the person. So I'm going to agree with them. Sally, like, I appreciate you letting me know that it's really expensive. And I appreciate your vulnerability. Like, not everyone would be willing to talk about money like that. So I really honor you. Um, and I agree with you. Like, it is expensive. I could totally understand where you're coming from. And I get it. And my next step here is going to be really asking them if they want this. So, Sally, like, based off of everything that you've seen from me so far, do you really feel like this could be the answer for you? Again, using a soft tone. I like talking really fast. I'm bold, powerful, like I like to get my things done, but that doesn't serve me in a sales call. I get to drop into a more motherly loving tone in order for them to feel safe so that they can make a decision so like based off of everything that you've seen from me so far sally do you feel like this could be the answer for you from that she says yes now i'm gonna ask her why she feels like that okay why do you feel like it is though and from there, she's going to start selling herself on why she feels like it is versus me trying to tell her why she should be in the program and how it should serve her and product pushing and trying to explain her and convince her. Like, she doesn't need to be convinced by me. She needs to be convinced by herself, okay? And I need to create a safe space in order for her to be able to do that. From there, I get to remind her as to why she's on this call in the first place. And sometimes when you're in fight or flight, you can't think straight. They're not thinking about the whole entire conversation that you just had with them. If you're a great salesperson, you're probably taking a bunch of notes, right? She totally forgot what she told you 10, 15 minutes ago because right now her brain is going, oh my gosh, I need to survive. I'm trying to protect myself. She has no idea that y'all just talked about her having a problem that's been existing in her life for three years and that it's affected her kid's relationship with her. Like, She's not thinking about that right now. She's just trying to keep herself safe. So you just have to have an understanding that she doesn't feel safe right now or the person in front of you doesn't feel safe when you're selling to guys. So what we get to do is remind them as to why they're on the call. Hey, you know, at the very beginning of this call, Sally, you did mention to me that this problem underneath all of this, the real problem here is that you actually don't have um, the ability to create a relationship with your son because you are in a place where you're having to provide for him and you're still not closing. And you've been trying to do this for two years and your son's about to go to middle school and he's about to not actually have time to want to play and want to spend time with you. Um, and that is really important for you to fix this before it's too late. And then you remind her of the future and you told me that this summer you wanted to take him to Disney World. 
and you wanted to go on all the rides and go to the Magic Kingdom and get Lion King hats and dance and have fun and be silly and not worry about, you know, the money that you need for this trip. Is this something that you actually really want? Again, holding space, tonality, like honoring. We're making her remember why she's there. It's really important to connect it personally, right? It's not just about logically explaining why they should do it. People don't buy based off logic. They buy based off of emotions. You need to emotionally let her connect so that she can realize that she has to change in order to be able to stop the habits that are not serving her any longer and be able to choose a new future, a new destiny, which means that she is going to have to change. And guess what? Most people don't want to change. It's uncomfortable to change, which is why most people stay the same. Most people are in relationships that they don't want to be in, jobs that they don't want to be in, have friends that they don't really care about, you know, and are doing the same thing, bodies that they don't really like. But why don't they change? Because changing is so freaking uncomfortable. And it requires you to step outside of your level of comfort and get super vulnerable in order to do something different. So when you're going into a sales call and when you're going into handling objections and you're having a feminine perspective, like you are here for this person's new life. It is selfish for you to not get uncomfortable for this person so that they can get uncomfortable, so that they can have the change that they so desire. Sometimes it's super uncomfortable to let people feel uncomfortable, but they deserve to change in their life. And if you're in alignment with you and you're in alignment with the product or service that you sell, then you're absolutely in your integrity by holding them to the higher standard of who they get to become. All, always. I love sales. I love, love showing um, women what's possible for them, showing them what's possible in terms of a new thought process on this. Right, You get to learn how to make money in a way that really serves you, a way that's really in alignment with your integrity and who you are. Um, please make sure you subscribe to our channel here. Subscribe to um, all the podcast versions. I have no idea where you're watching on. Subscribe to the YouTube. Subscribe to the Spotify, the Apple Music, wherever you're at. Um, and make sure you follow us, Kayla Livy Boldly on Instagram and our Women in Sales Facebook group. And this is not just about me, ladies. Like, this gets to be about you too. I want to know your questions. I want to know your perspective, your thoughts on something. If something happens in the sales call and you're like, oh, hell no, Kayla. Like, that is not what I'm going to do. That's not what I'm going to step in. That's not who I want to be like. Like, whatever is coming up for you, like, please communicate it with me because I would love to hear your perspective. I would love to know tricks or things that you know that you possibly learned. Um, I know a lot of my ladies were asking me possibly about getting hit on in a sales call. Like if you get hit on by men and you're freaking tired of it in terms of your sales conversations and you're just like, what am I doing? Why is this always happening? I'm telling you there's a secret. There's something there. Um, and we'll definitely go over that over the next podcast episode. But for now, ciao, cheers. Love you. Have a great night.